What's good, all my ruthless addicts? It is your girl, Ticket to Shine, and I am here to bring you Tyler Perry's Ruthless, Season 3, Episode 5, Recap. Hey, addicts, this episode is brought to you by Pretty Blends at prettyblends.com. Pretty Blends is a well renowned hair company that provides high quality custom lace wigs. Their passion for excellence has driven them from the beginning and continues to drive them into the future. Check out their store and special offers and get in touch with any questions or requests at prettyblends.com. Okay, addicts, let's get into it. We are currently at the pavilion. This is where the scene is set, you guys. We are currently at the pavilion where the highest has announced that Ruth is going to be his wife. Now, if you look at Daikon's face, he is extremely hurt. He's salty. He's big mad, as they would say. And he's not feeling this whole situation of Ruth becoming the highest's wife, especially because of the fact that he was... He was that prison wife, if you know what I mean. Okay, so Daikon is big mad. And anyway, with that being said, the highest looks to everyone and he tells them, um, I have a special movie for everyone. Um, he said that you see how Ruth speaks to me and you see how I speak to Ruth. That's how we're going to speak um, in the apocalypse and when the Raku and... No, he's not talking about killing everybody or taking everybody out or just this moment. But he just wants to give them an example of how the afterlife is going to be. And so with that being said, um, everybody puts on the little fake smile. Joan has her fake smile. Uh, Elder Mother Marva has her fake smile. So Ruth sits down next to Elder Mother Marva and says... Um, of course, Marvin says to Ruth, well, congratulations. I always knew you were special. Um, <laughs> that's probably not what she really wanted to say, but that's what she mustered up the energy to come out her mouth and say. So, Ruth being Ruth, um, she kind of turned it on Elder Mother just to say, well, you got a new position too. You know, not just to, like, you're, my elder, you're the mother's supreme mother. Like, you're no longer just an elder mother, you know. So, just to make her kind of feel good and kind of turn the heat off of Ruth. Um, then, standing in the line where the soldiers are, um, I really never really understood why um, Riru stood where he stood when they were out during these messages. But I kind of do. Maybe it's because of the relationship that he and the highest actually has. That sexual, intimate relationship that they have. And not to mention the abusive part, but the intimate relationship that he and the highest has, maybe that's why he feels comfortable standing on the road where Manny, um, Andrew, and Daikon are. Now, Daikon looks down and sees a river, and he knows you was, just, you was in the cooler. How in the world are you standing here right now? So, Daikon walks over to river and tells him i want to talk to you right now let's go so the basis um i'll get to that but river you know river's like i'm not moving like somebody save me from daikon right now um but he's just you know telling him there's really nothing for us to talk about but andrew insists or i'm sorry y'all daikon insists that river you know moves and so he does. He walks away. Um, then Hyas is still sitting on his throne, and he calls uh, Ruth to come, you know, up to the front. And as soon as Ruth gets up, the people stand up and they begin to bow to her. And you know, she's not used to that, but he tells her, um, you know, you're you're gonna have to get used to it. And so with that conversation ending, he's getting ready to walk over to his trailer, and she asks him. Um, should I go with you? And he says, no, um, no, you're fine. Um, send River. Okay, the height is ready for River, y'all. But anyway, then we get to the scene where Daikon has face, is face to face with River. And at this point, River still can't come up with any type of excuse as to why 
as to why he was in that um finance trailer after hours with the lights on as well as why he was trying to get into the safe so luckily ruth walks up and she sees daikon um all up in river's face and she tells him hey the highest would like to see river and so now daikon he's not feeling the fact that the highest is called basically everybody except him um but you know Ruth being Ruth, she convinces um, Daikon to let River go ahead and go to talk to um, um, the highest because, you know, the highest, rich, you know, the highest is normally upset around this time. So let's just let him, let him, you know, remain happy. Let him stay happy. And so, um, uh, Daikon agrees to a certain extent and River is able to walk off without further punishment from Daikon. Okay, so um, then the conversation turns into Ruth and Daikon alone. Daikon, you know, Ruth tells Daikon, you know, I still love you and, you know, uh, Daikon is not, not having it. Daikon is not with it. So, in actuality, you guys, Daikon, he's straight up, he's straight mad at Ruth. I think he's more mad at Ruth because she's messing around with the highest than she than the fact that he's no she's no longer gonna be messing around with him um, because of the quote unquote love that he has for her. Um, but he tells Ruth, you know, you can't sex him the way that I do. You can't, you know, take care of him the way that I do. And Ruth broke it down to him. She said, if if we can all work this thing together, this compound won't be so messy and so much drama if we work together. Um, because when you were doing it, when you were trying to do it by yourself, secrets were being kept and Hyas was angry all the time. So Daikon, he kind of pretty much, he thought about that, of course. And of course, he walked away salty, but... He'll be all right, as um, and I'm, I'm sure Ruth is thinking, yeah, he's gonna be all right. Um, so he walks away, and then we have the three that are still, of course, they are still in the punishment trailer, and with that knife, they are able to get freed, hands free, legs freed. Um, the three being Brian, Lacey, Oliver, who are all in that punishment trailer, they are able to break free. Um. Well, not that free. They're able to just unloose, unsecure, you know, their arms and feet and everything from, you know, now they're not chained down in that trailer. Um, but Brian, he begins to ask Lacey and Oliver, you know, a lot of questions like what's going on here and um, FBI and you know, and, and Oliver with his slick mouth, if you FBI, then you should already know, you know, what's going on on this compound. And Brian is just like, look, um, you know, there's a lot of things I do know. There's a lot of things I don't know. I just need confirmation. And so he starts to ask them about the guns. Like, I know that there are guns on this compound, so where are the guns located? And um, uh, Lacey says to you know she calls Oliver's name like as as if to say man just tell him like tell him what you know you know and so um, he Lace Oliver tells Brian that the guns are literally everywhere on the Rockadoosh compound they're in empty vehicles they're in in trailers they're all over the place and so you know if you're gonna get us out of here we're gonna be able to escape. You got a lot, a lot, a lot to face because these people are loyal. They will live and die for the highest. He said that he was one of those people that will live and die for the highest. So then we're at a scene where River makes his way over to the highest's trailer. Y'all, can I tell y'all that the only reason the highest wanted River to come to his trailer was basically for his his booty call. That's probably why he asked for the incense in the previous scene too. But he wanted a river to, you know, come to his trailer. And he basically propositioned him, told him to take his clothes off. And River's smart, you know. I think River's still trying to cover up those bruises that he got on his feet. But he said, you know, to the highest, um, you think that's a, a wise idea, especially right now? 
why not you know we already it's already working let's just give um let's keep the impression that you know you and i are nothing you know compared to the relationship you and ruth have together and so the highest is like okay you know yeah i'll agree to that and but he's so excited he's just so excited that his little his little plot um for the others to see is actually working he's like mad excited about that and so then um he tells um river okay well go ahead and get dot con but you come back and you see me later so he's expecting river to come back later so they can do that thing and uh <laughs> which is hilarious um but then we see the ladies we see ruth we see elder mother or mother supreme mother marva <laughs> Um, and standing near the cool, the container where they're gonna where they normally serve the punch out of, and so Ruth has that that cool that little container, and she's getting ready to go take it to make some punch, but she calls she calls Joan over to help her, and of course Marvel is telling um Ruth you don't have to you don't have to do that anymore like you're the wife you're going to be his wife you don't have to basically lift a hand but Ruth is saying that she has to show them that she's a servant she's still a servant and she's not you know you know how some people feel like oh she's got a little power so now she thinks she's gonna feel better than everybody well Ruth is basically trying to show them that she's still a humble servant of the highest and of the people and so they walk off to take the cooler uh, over to the kitchen then we have Daikon, Lord. Listen, y'all. When I tell y'all, this crap right here was so funny to me. Um, Daikon and Andrew. Daikon is big man. We know that he's upset. So, Andrew being the person that he is, oh, well, um, is, can I help you? Are you okay? Um, but he got a little too friendly. At first, Daikon wasn't, um, well, Andrew didn't get too friendly. Daikon ended up getting too friendly. But first, Daikon was apprehensive as to whether what information he should reveal about how he was feeling and all of that and so you know Andrew let him know I know you're upset but you know I have your back no matter what and so this man Daikon <laughs> said to Andrew I want to buck you okay y'all know how to feel in that letter I'm not going to say what he said but he said I want to I want to buck you go to go to my trailer right now and Andrew is looking at him like, man, what you talking about? Like, Daikon, you know I am not with that. So, nah, bruh. He's, so then Andrew just, you know, he was like, nah, I'll I'll check on you later. Like, nah. So luckily, because uh, Daikon was persistent, that insistent that Andrew would go to his trailer. But Andrew was like, I'm not with the shenanigans. And so luckily, River walked up. River walks up and he lets the highest know, or he lets Daikon know that the highest wants to see him. Um, and then he basically put a little bug in his ear saying that, you know, the highest feels that you're always bringing him bad news. So just don't upset him. Like, we don't need him upset tonight. Like, he's in a good mood. Don't, you know, don't, don't ruin his spirits. But ruining him, not saying anything is what got, got Daikon into the trouble that he was in. So he's at a crosswalk as to whether or not he should or shouldn't, you know, talk to the, to the highest um, and tell him what's really going on. And uh, that's in regards to everybody dying around the compound as well as um, the FBI agent being on the compound. And even down to the fact that River was in that, um, finance trailer after hours um with with the key and the fact that yes he is dead so it's a whole lot and daikon is literally going through his mind as to whether or not he should or shouldn't you know speak on what is going on so then we have um the ladies finally make their way to the food trailer which the ladies being ruth and joan they make their way to the food trailer and they began to, you know, mix the punch. And so Ruth hands Joan a bottle of Oxycontin. The pills are called Oxycontin. Um, that she hands to her. And 
She says, um, what is this? And Ru Ruth tells Joan to put it in the put it in the um in the lock. Put it in the safe. Put the pills. Y'all see the pills, right? Put the pills in the safe. Now she's setting this whole thing up, law. When I tell y'all Ruth is so she's smart, she's strategic, she comes up with stuff. It might take her a minute, but she comes up with some awesome stuff. If I if if y'all can understand what I'm saying. So anyway, she hands her the pills. At first, Joan is reluctant to take the pills from her, but then you know she goes ahead and she takes them from her. Um, then Daikon has finally made his way to the highest trailer. He's got that look in his face like which he don't know which highest he's going to expect. But then the highest plants a big old kiss on his on his lips. And that of course pleases Daikon, but he's still upset at the fact that you, you took this woman as your wife. So the highest asked him, Well, did you want her? And then you know, he said, Cause I could see how the men are looking at her, but did you want her too? And Daikon is like, no, I, just, I know she's a beautiful woman, your highest, but no, I don't want her. Um, I'm sure you don't now after you find out she's been messing with your man. Okay. So anyway, y'all, the highest, you know, he was just like saying to Daikon, this is going to kind of calm everybody, keep everybody from all the little chitter chatter. He said, but you didn't tell me what was really going on. So that's why I was so upset with you. And so... Now I can for for Lee, for Daikon, he honestly truly did not know that Lilo was dead. He honestly didn't know. He knew that Carl was there, but he didn't know. So he basically kind of found out right after the highest found out. So I can't be mad at him for that. But all the other stuff that was going on, yeah, he he did keep a lot from the highest. So then um Daikon proceeds to tell the highest that yeah, um well, you know, he said, well, actually, first, the highest tells Daikon, don't worry about, um, tell Yancey not to worry about fixing those old buses. We're going to have two new buses coming soon. And so, Daikon proceeds, he has to say something. So, he says to the highest, well, Yancey is dead. Um, he says, what do you mean Yancey is dead? Um, he was one of the deserters, and so I shot him. Now, my y'all... Tally poisoned, Tally poisoned Yancey, but in the later conversation, Daikon says that, um, that Yancey was stabbed, but we know that Yancey had been poisoned by Tally, quote, and remember the bowl of tomato soup, that was his last supper, so, anyways, either way, I guess they are gonna stab him later, and you know, come up with a, you know, but Daikon has his reasoning for telling the highest. He doesn't want the highest to be upset and he doesn't want him to find out later and then he received more punishment for not saying anything. So he said he's been through that one too many times so he's not going to do it again. Um, he also told the highest that I caught the we caught the three, the, the ones that escaped, that tried to escape. He never mentioned Paula but he did, you know, he did let him know he got uh, Oliver Lacey as well as Brian, who's supposed to be a local sheriff deputy, but is actually an FBI, FBI agent. Now, the highest looks like he's getting ready to get upset, but he says to um, Daikon, you know, okay, let me just, what should we do? But then he just, he gets back into himself and says let us just let me just meditate on this and see you know what i should do so daikon leaves the highest trailer and you know kudos to daikon because that could have went horribly wrong but it wouldn't have been his fault it wouldn't have been his fault he he at least he told him so um then we have ruth and this one i tell y'all ruth is strategic that's why i love her character so much she's mad strategic but um she says to river tell him you have an oxycontin problem um and river slow behind like huh what tell him tell basically tell daikon when he comes to you again or if you see him again that you had an oxycontin problem and that's what you were and the oxycontin is kept in a safe and that's what you were trying to um trying to get to now remind y'all Ruth told 
Joan to put the Oxycontin in the in the um in the safe. Y'all remember that, right? So she, like I said, she basically is setting the scene so that when if if Daikon goes and try to look in that um in that safe, he'll see that the Oxycontin are actually in there. And then his uh, river story will be pretty much credible. So he, of course, Ruth is a genius, and that's what River told you. He was like, "You're a genius." I know. Basically, you never would have thought of that, but she did because she's Ruth and she's ruthless. So then we finally back at the um, punishment trailer, um, and uh, Brian asks, you know, because they hear music or like talking and. Brian asked Lacey like what's that and she basically says that's um that's the music that's from they're watching a movie so uh Brian's like so y'all having a movie night and he said like, yeah pretty much she said that's the only time they ever she ever felt normal um was when they were able to have a, a movie night and you know um so listen <laughs> Lacey all of, uh, Brian asked Lacey, you know, um, why are you, why did you come here? You know, she was like, um, to find love. And he said, he asked her, he said, well, did you find love? And she said, no, not here. And Oliver was looking at her like, what? Like, what you, <laughs> I've been through all of this for you and you talking about you didn't find love. So I got a little attitude and, um, Brian was like, am I missing something? And then, uh, Oliver slick mouth says, uh, so, so you, 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 you not, you don't get it. You know, basically the nature of our relationship is that I love her. She loves me in so many words, but then Brian says, Oh, okay. I get it. Um, so then, um, you know, she says, I do love you, Oliver. You know, she told Oliver she loved him, but at the end of the day, sis, you can you you can answer that question a little bit more different than the way you did. You you know he he questioned you. He been questioning you the entire time, but you could have just you could have came up and said, yeah, I found love, whether you truly felt like you found love or not. But anyway, we'll see how much further their bond, their um union goes between Oliver and Lacey. So finally, Brian, um, Lacey is telling um, Brian that there's going to be some new recruits coming soon. Um, it's normally housewives and uh, drug addicted women. And Brian, he, he thinks back and he asks um, Lacey, have you seen, or asked the two of them, have you seen this woman? She's brown skinned, um, about 5'5". Five, five. And he that was basically the description that he gave, and of course he's talking about Lynn. Um, so Oliver say Oliver says no, I haven't seen her, but Lacey says, yeah, I've seen her. And then um, Lacey asks, are is she undercover too? Is she FBI? And Brian says to her, no, that's my wife. And then that's when they asked him, so this is personal, you know, so basically this is personal. Yeah, it is personal for Brian. <laughs> it shouldn't be. It is, though, um, because, you know, but he's a man with emotions. It is what it is. And so then they talk about, you know, they might be safe because Paula is out there. But Brian proceeds to say, we can't really trust that because, you know, she she might be. She's supposed to be going to the hospital because she got shot. And then, you know, um, but if she doesn't make it, you know, we can't trust that she's going to help us. But I, uh, uh, Brian is persistent in saying, thinking that somebody is going to save him. He really doesn't realize that nobody picked up his call. Nobody got his messages except Cheryl Conley. Um, his, his, his attempt in trying to contact Matt was diverted through so at this point um hopefully because hopefully you know at some point andrew find him himself a phone and calls matt and let max know matt know what's going on at that rocket douche compound hopefully hopefully y'all hopefully because it's getting crazy it's getting mad crazy so again you got daikon and um andrew up talking again i don't know why 
and you keep trying to walk up on Daikon <laughs> to have a conversation with him. I really don't. But um, Andrew, uh, Daikon says to Andrew, remember that thing we was talking about later? And and uh, I mean, remember that thing we was talking about earlier? That situation where he propositioned. Once again, this is the second time he done propositioned Andrew. Like, so Daikon, you attracted to Andrew too? First you was jealous of him. Now you attracted to him. Now you that's you, you want you just want to screw somebody. That's what it sounds like. But uh Daikon, Andrew was like, I'm not with it. Let me walk away. So he walks away. <laughs> he walks away and um of course up walks River and he says River says to Daikon basically what um basically what um Andrew I mean, basically what Ruth told him to say was that he had an Oxycontin problem. So, so, um, Daikon, you know, he's questioning, he was telling him, look, you better not be lying to me. If I find out you lying, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a serious problem. So, um, Daikon, you know, he walks away, but then we have our girl Ruth, or I'm sorry, we have, um, baby girl, uh, Zane. Who is walking from the restroom over by that little box where Melinda was killed? And so she's approached by Manny, y'all. Listen, let me tell y'all, Manny, you got me stressed, bro. You need to leave the girls alone. So basically, he um, harasses her and tells her, I know you sent that girl Melinda over here. You know, this is my post. I know you sent her over here. And she's like, Well, why would I send her, you know, over here? Um, I don't, you know, I don't really know her. I, why would I send her over here? And so he basically, he tries, he forces her to get down in the box and he tells her, um, to finish what Melinda started. But throughout the process, he couldn't really even perform. Either she just didn't know what she was doing or he just couldn't perform, period. That's just what it all boiled down to y'all. So anyway, um, she goes down into that box and she attempts but then he she is it's, it's just not working for him it's just not working for him so she pushes him or he pushes her you know away and sends her on her way but but Manny y'all he is out of control Manny is out of control he has to be stopped at some point but I guess today is not going to be that day. So, y'all, I want y'all to check out this clip that I included into this. I normally do my weekly, my most intense scenes. But I'm going to show you guys at the that. Just check out this scene between Joan and Daikon. To me, this was voted, nominated, and I'll probably repost this again over in Facebook and Instagram as my most intense scene found of this week's episode. But this scene between Joan and Daikon was extremely intense to me. There's something more. There's something more between them that we just don't know about. And at some point, we're going to find out, y'all. So anyway, that's about it. I just wanted to come in, give you guys this review. Check out this clip and let me know what you think. Drop down your comments below. Let me know what you think. Make sure you share this um, video for me, please. Please, please, please share. Um, share with your friends. Share with everybody that's on your Facebook. Um, just come through and drop your comments. And let me know what you guys think, okay? All right. Well, let me before I give y'all the ending, let me, let me tell y'all one final thing, though. I'm, I'm ready to shout it out to y'all. But the final in the very last scene of this episode, you have Andrew... Daikon and the highest. Daikon gives the highest a gun. The highest asks Daikon for a gun, so he gives it to him. He says that, you know, let's go to this trailer and um, let's talk to this FBI agent. But then the highest kind of questions, he kind of questions um, um, Andrew's loyalty to a certain extent. And he says to him, if you're really with us, you basically will shoot this FBI agent. So now, Andrew has the gun, and they're about to go and talk to Brian. I don't know if this is going to turn out good, y'all. Hopefully, it will, I will to a certain extent where Andrew can protect Brian. 
I don't know. Y'all know how the highest is too. So anyway, y'all, that's just something we got to look forward to for next week. Okay. All right, y'all. Well, that's about it. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a great one and stay ruthless. I'm I'm sorry. Well. Tell me what's in it. Oh, I am. Um, I, I can't. I, I'm sorry. Joan. I was told there's a computer in there. Oh. You were grossly misinformed. Icon. So what's in it? Uh, there is no computer in there. It's just uh, papers and old records. That's all. That's it. Huh? That's all that's in there. Tell me. I could I, I could get into trouble. Tell me. Now. Prescriptions there for the highest. What kind of prescriptions? I I I, I, I don't know. I just know he needs them. I see. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, All Things Ruthless, where I, your girl, Tika Deshaun, will usher you all of the latest Ruthless content.